In today's video, we're going to be discussing how to solve the Schrodinger equation for the case of a free particle. That means for the case where there is a potential of V equals zero everywhere. Now, this sounds like it's going to be a lot easier than it actually is. And that is also why we have not discussed this up until now, because first it was important that we got a bit more comfortable uh, working with quantum mechanics, because this is actually uh, surprisingly uh, not as easy as one would think. It's not the hardest, but it's definitely not as easy as we would have thought that it would be, considering that it's a free particle. So, the Schrodinger equation in this case is going to be minus h bar squared divided by 2m d squared psi dx squared. And now the potential is zero, so we just go straight to this is equal to the energy times psi. So, this is the Schrodinger equation, we can now rewrite this as d squared psi dx squared. This is equal to 2 minus 2 me divided by h bar squared times psi. And if we now call this just my, uh, this is just going to be k squared, this right here, we get this differential equation, which we have already solved. That's why I'm going a bit faster. We already solved this in the case of the, of the uh, infinite square well. So just to make it explicit, k squared is 2me divided by h bar squared. And the solutions to this, as I said, we already found them. If you haven't watched the video on the infinite square well and you are not sure how to solve this equation, then uh, I really encourage you to go back and watch it because here I'm just going to use the solution that we found before, right? That our solutions are just going to be a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i kx. Okay, we already solved this before, so I really don't see that there's too much point in making another video solving the same thing. So let us work with that. Now, what we will be doing next is just adding the time dependence on this, just as we did in other cases. We want, now want to take a look at this psi of x comma t. So in order to do that, we just go ahead and well, we write the same thing, but we now multiply by e to the minus i e t divided by h bar. And we do the same thing to the other part, b e to the minus i k x times e to the minus i e t divided by h bar. But the energy we can find from this expression right here. So from there we see that the energy is just going to be h bar squared k squared divided by 2m. Right, so we can replace this and write it into these exponentials. So we are going to see that it's going to be e to the minus i, just, well, I like to write it this way, k, uh, k squared h, not h squared, because it canceled out with the h so that it wasn't the denominator, divided by 2m e to the minus i k squared h bar, ah, times t, by the way, times t divided by 2m. Okay, so this is the general form, I, at least this form of the, of the solutions. Obviously, there is going to be a more general form, as we have done before, and we will get to that uh, quite soon. But first, there is something that we have to address. So let's take a look at what it is that we have here. Because, in fact, and let me write it a bit more explicitly, so let's do it as e to the i factoring kx minus k squared h bar, uh, not squared, sorry, t divided by 2m plus b e to the minus i kx minus, uh, actually plus now, this is going to be, oh, the squared didn't come, it was stuck in the other slide, h bar t divided by 2m, there we go. So, I hope you recognize this from some course you may have taken uh, regarding waves, because the first one right here is going to be a traveling wave that travels to the right, and the le the, this one right here will be traveling to the left. Okay, because remember this, you can write it as a, in terms of cosine and sine, and it's going to be something like cosine of kx minus, well, all of this right here, you know, that thing, alpha t. And when we have it in that form, we can see that this alpha is usually the velocity. And 
well, this is going to be telling you the direction. When, it is, when this thing is positive and there's a minus in front, it means you are going to the right. And when the, this alpha t is negative, like in this case, you're going to get a plus, which means it's going to be traveling to the left. So that is uh, the way these waves behave. So what you can see then is there's going to be the most general solution here is going to be this combination between a wave traveling to the right and a wave traveling to the left. Okay, so that's what this is going to be. So since the difference is going to be basically in the direction of, of the speed, which is given by our k, we can actually put these two uh, parts together because this k right now is positive. But if we allow k to be negative, so right now, uh, let's see, if, if the k is positive, right, this is just going to be traveling to the right here, but this has a minus sign in front. So if we say OK, then this tra wave traveling to the left will just correspond to values of k that are less than zero. Right. So in that case, it's going to be exactly the same to just write this as a to the e i k x minus k squared h bar t divided by 2m. But now we are allowing k to have any possible values. Before k was greater than zero exclusively. Now k can either be greater than zero or k can be smaller than zero. When k is less than zero, then we are going to have this right here. And when it is greater than zero, we will have this right here. So we are basically covering both cases with this, uh, with this new form. Okay, so let me raise that. So we have now this thing right here. So another thing that we have to just take a look at because is that now I kind of used it, but I didn't talk too much about it. Our energy is h bar squared k squared divided by 2m, right? That's what it was, right? Yes. And before, and by before, I mean, when we were working with a quantum harmonic oscillator or with an infinite square well, our energies were for in a harmonic oscillator, they were something like n plus one half h bar omega. And in the case of the infinite square well, they were something like n squared pi squared h bar squared divided by two m a squared. So in these cases, the energy was restricted. You could not have any, any energy. You, it had to be of this form and only for the permitted values of n, right? It had to be integers, integers of n. So your values were the rest restricted. And that is because we have these conditions on the wave function. We said the wave function in the case of the infinite square well has to be zero at zero or at a. Uh, or well, if you move it maybe at minus a and a, it's the same. And in the case of the harmonic oscillator, we also had conditions. We said in this recurrence relationship, for example, we said, oh, there has to be this top uh, level so that the re recurrence relationship uh, doesn't go just go to infinity. And if when you use these ladder operators, we also said there has to be this bottom uh, state where we just can't go any lower. We had several conditions that we imposed. But in this case, there aren't really any conditions. This is just a free particle. So this means the value of energy can be just anything, okay? So that is important. The value of energy is not restricted, right? So let us now just see a second thing that is also going to be peculiar and different from what we saw before. So when we are talking about these standing waves, when my dogs are going crazy, I, oh my God. Let me, okay, sorry about that. Okay, so, what we were seeing before uh, was that we always had this wave that was normalizable, right? So let us now take a look at this. Let us just go ahead and integrate from minus infinity to infinity what we have here. So this is just going to be integral dx of this squared. So it's going to be integral from minus infinity to infinity of a squared e to the minus i kx minus k squared h bar divided by 2mt. This minus right here is because this is the conjugate, right? And this is going to be times e to the i kx minus k squared h bar divided by 2m 
t dx. But these exponentials would just cancel out, right? This is just going to cancel out because one has a minus, one has a, has a plus. We are going to be adding up the exponents. So we are left with this integral, which is just a squared integral from minus infinity to infinity of one dx, which is just a squared of x evaluated between basically minus infinity and infinity. And this is just going to diverge, right? This, this does not have a definite value. So as we can see, these states as they are seem to be non-normalizable. And that is, that means that there are no uh, standing wave solution because that's what we had before, right? In the other cases, when we were doing these normalizations, we said this, this wave has to be located somewhere. This has to be normalizable. And that is just not the case for the free particle. So the solution that we found here, for example, is actually not really valid. <laughs> so that's kind of a problem. It's not physically valid because it's not normalizable. And that is because these, uh, these free, uh, st these standing waves cannot be free particles, right? The pa free particles cannot be in this uh, standing wave uh, states. But these solutions, although they may not be by themselves correct in terms of physically permitted, they are actually of quite a bit of mathematical interest because while those solutions may not uh, be good, if we take a linear combination of them, because these will form a complete state, uh, a complete sp space, just as in the previous cases, then this is actually going to be very interesting. So what we want to do now is go ahead and take a linear combination of what we just found. So what we did before, we said, okay, let's just take, let's just add up every possible state, right? Uh, well, it usually started at zero, depends on what we're doing, but we just add up every possible state and we put this coefficient in front. And that is our most general form. And well, we had this uh, time dependent thing here, right? But now we don't really have just some allowed states. Our particle can be in any state, right? There is no restriction in that term. So what we have to consider here for this is going to be every allowed value of k, which remember is related to the velocity of the particle because this is, this is a traveling wave. And uh, as we saw before, the speed, the velocity is going to be given by that second term in this exponential. So this is going to be, the k is going to be related to our speed, our velocity. So basically this integral is just going to be integrating over all of our possible values of k, which is related to all of the possible values of the velocity of the particles. So this is basically going to be what before was done by the summation of C cn, right? What before was the sum of cn, now it's going to be done by this integral of this phi that depends on k. So what, and now this is going to be multiplied by what we already had, just e to the i times kx minus h bar squared, uh, not squared, sorry, h bar k squared times t divided by 2m, I hope I did this correctly, um, minus k, yes. Okay, uh, and then there's just the, and that's important, we are integrating over k here, do not be confused and do not integrate over x, okay? Because here what we are considering are all of the possible values of this parameter k, which is related to the velocity. So obviously we have to integrate with respect to that. So that is a, a typical thing that might confuse you. So this derivative is done with respect to k. So this is basically the same that we had in the infinite square well, when we said, okay, we have to now just add up over this cn square root of two over a sine of n pi x divided by a times e to the minus i e t divided by a, what was it? A h bar. So we have this in the case of the infinite square well, and this thing right here is precisely the same for the case of this free particle. So what we did in the case of the of this uh, right here is that we used Fourier strict, right? We multiplied by, 
some other state psi m and then we integrate it and with that we found that the cn was going to be this uh, integral of psi of x comma zero and the psi n right that's what we found before but now we have to do something similar and in fact it's the same idea but now we don't have the summation now we have this integral so we, what we are going to use here is exactly the same but with the limit to the continuum right before it was for this discrete case and now this is going to be for continuum and that is actually something that i hope you have seen before but maybe in other contexts that is going to be the fourier transform okay so if we have psi of let's say x comma zero right let's just take the, when the time is zero at some initial time this is going to be minus infinity to infinity phi k e to the i k x d k so if we have the wave function at the final moment uh, sorry at the first moment then we need to find this phi of, phi of k so if we know this phi of k we can get to know what this function right here is and thus we can then uh, end up knowing exactly what what our function is going to be and well in fact if we know the phi of k we can just go in here and it's already done but the question is what do we do if we are we know what the state is like at the beginning but we don't know what it what it is after right so we want to find out this phi of k and here as i said is where we usually use fourier's trick which now in the limit to the continuum is going to be just the fourier transform and by the way there is something that i didn't want to include up until now because i wanted to give this concept of the fourier transform you are probably wondering or maybe <laughs> in fourier transform there's usually this constant of normalization which is one divided by the square root of two pi and that is something that we are going to include here which is just for normalization purposes that is just there for convenience and it is part of our cn right cn not quite what before was cn now is going to be this phi of k divided by the square root of 2 pi okay that's just to to make this comparison to what we did before so the 1 over square root of 2 pi comes from this whole fourier transfer because that is there for normalization of that process so in order to find then this we apply the fourier transform that i hope you have seen before if not well, we are not going to go like super deep into the Fourier transform, so you might as well just memorize this formula. Um, but it does, it is obviously good if you understand it somewhat uh, more. So what we get then is just one divided by square root of two pi. And the integral will still go from minus infinity to infinity. But now it's going to be on this side, right? And it's going to be acting on our x so it's going to be e to the minus i k x and the integral will be with respect to x okay so this is going to be the fourier transform of what is up there and well you can actually apply it again or the inverse fourier transform to go from one to the other but these are the two forms that are important right so if you know what the state is at the beginning you can apply this formula and you will get the coefficient phi of k, which you then have to plug into this equation right here. This is basically the same that we did in the previous cases, right? In the cases of this infinite square well, for example. But this time, what we have here is just in the limit to the continuum, right? And just to get a small intuition, in order to go from this step to this step, um, it is Kind of more complex derivation that if you really want we can take a look at that in, in another video but basically you integrate both sides and multiply by e minus chi kx with k prime and then you integrate it with respect to x right so then you're going to get this same thing on the other side and that's why there's also at this shape so that maybe can help you memorize it and this right here will actually be kind of as we saw before this uh, this delta that uh, the chronicle delta that only allows some certain uh, values to exist the same is going to happen and this integral will only be non-zero for these certain values of k but that derivation as i said 
is not really something that I'm planning to do in this course, but if I see that there's really a lot of interest and something that will really help you, we can include it. So this is basically what we needed to know. This is what we, this is how you solve the problems for the free particle, okay? So next we are going to do some examples and the, in the next video, of course, not, not right now. So I hope that this was useful to you. If it is, you know, just let me know in the comments and if there's any questions, I'll be checking it out. So I'll see you later.